So can cheap wine really be good? Well, it depends. I went to the supermarket, picked up three bottles that are under $5.50. We're gonna see if these cheap wines are any good. That's all coming up. Wine's often associated with luxury and with prestige, but actually the majority of wines around the world are pretty darn inexpensive. In the US, for instance, one of the world's biggest markets, the average price per bottle is around eight to 11 US dollars, depending on the source. Another one of the world's biggest markets, the UK, the United Kingdom, the average price per bottle is six pounds or $8.38. And you go to another big country in Europe like Germany, the average price per bottle there is around three euros. It's like $3.60. A lot of wines are moved through big retailers or supermarkets, but can you find value in those kind of stores, the retailers or the supermarkets? I think we've all been there. Even me, when I first started out drinking wine, just staring at the supermarket shelf, having the look of a deer in headlights, having no idea what I was about to pick. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can find value. However, it can be a crapshoot. The likelihood of getting a good bottle at a cheap price obviously isn't as high as getting a good bottle that's a little more expensive. So let's try to put that to the test or see if I crash and burn. <laughs> I bought three bottles here, all under five US dollars and 50 cents from different parts of the world that I think offer great value. So let's see if it worked out. The first one here I have from Australia. This is the De Bortoli Australia Chardonnay Estate Reserve 2019. It's from Southeastern Australia. I love Australian wines, especially at the high end. The small producers, the wines can be extraordinary, but there's a lot of inexpensive wine that's actually exported. It comes with a nice little screw top. What makes expensive wines more expensive? Well, at the very bottom level, you need higher quality grapes. So better wine equals better grapes equals pricier grapes. Anybody that's ever cooked before knows that you can make a better dish with higher quality materials. And one big factor in that is real estate, where the grapes are from. Generally, cheaper wines are gonna come from a bigger, broader area, as more expensive wines are gonna come from smaller locations or even micro locations, single vineyards. This is from Southeastern Australia. It means the grapes could come from all over. There's a lot of Chardonnay for whites, a lot of Shiraz in Australia that's relatively inexpensive. This was $4.50. I have to say, <laughs> this nose smells pretty good. It smells like wine. You get a lot of melon, a lot of pineapple, white peach type flavors. It's even a little bit flinty. It actually, if I tasted this blind, I might think that it's a little bit more expensive if I smelled it blind. Let's see how it is on the palate. A little green guava. I'm actually really surprised. I thought that this wine would be the worst out of all of them. I'm actually quite shocked. This is pretty good. I thought this would be sweet, maybe vanilla, maybe oaky. It's not a butter mob. It's not full of vanilla. It actually tastes pretty bit good. It's round, full bodied. It tastes like Chardonnay. I've tasted a lot of crappier Chardonnays for more expensive prices that weren't as good as this. Yes, the finish is short. Usually more expensive wines, better wines are going to have a longer finish, but really, this is a barbecue wine. This is something inexpensive. You're going to bring to a lot of people. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. I'm shocked. I actually was ready to just pounce on this wine and poo-poo on it. <laughs> this wine I'd recommend. Next up, about two reds. We're going to Portugal. This is the JMF, or the Jose Maria Fonseca. Vinho Regional Peninsula de Setubal Tinto Red Rouge. 2019. I'm telling you, the south of Portugal, the Alentejo, the Peninsula de Setubal, you can get extraordinary values there. Portugal in general. I think Portugal is the best country in the world when it comes to really good wines at low, low prices. I bought this for $4.50. Portugal is really cool because it's also going to use a lot of grapes that aren't familiar to normal people. Like this is a blend of Castelho and Trincadera. In general, the reds of southern Portugal are going to be more fruity, a little bit more robust. So they're really friendly to a lot of wine drinkers. It's so interesting to do tastings like this. As you grow up in the wine world, you start to level up in terms of wine tasting. So it's really nice to go back and taste the kind of wines that most people are drinking. I have visited this cellar before, but they were pouring me the more expensive wines. They were pouring me the cheap wine. Again, this also smells like a decent quality wine. A lot of, uh, a lot of blackberries, a lot of raspberry, black raspberry type flavors. It's even a little bit earthy. It's not really an oaky wine, which is getting me quite excited. Usually with cheaper reds, the tans are gonna be a little bit softer. 
you know, those things that dry out your mouth. The flavor on this wine is okay, it's good. I thought this would be the best out of maybe all three, but you definitely can feel that this is an inexpensive wine. As people that have more experienced palates, all of a sudden the structure's there and the wine just kind of disappears at the end. But all in all, I don't think this, is a, this isn't offensive. You know, I see a lot of times, in, oh wow, this wine disappears completely. You know, a lot of times I see people that are a little bit more snobby wine saying, I won't drink this, won't drink this, but then I just see them drink anything that's in front of them. And you know, when I started wine, that was, that was me too. I had preferences, but in general, if there was wine there, I would drink it. Now, as I've kind of grown up, my palate's evolved a little bit. Also, I gotta be careful with my weight. I gotta be careful where the calories go. Uh, I'm a little bit more picky on what I would wanna drink. Jose Maria Fonseca, oh, you know, for $4.50 for a red, I think it's it's okay. It's not It's nothing that's gonna blow my mind. Next up, we have the Eugenio Bustos La Finca Malbec Oak Aged 2017. This is with the most expensive wine, $5.50 from Argentina or Argentina. South America, Argentina, Chile really hung their hat on producing inexpensive soft reds uh, for export markets. So let's see how this is. It says aged in oak barrels for three months. I kind of find it hard to believe a wine at this price could be aged in oak. Aging in oak barrels costs money and then costs time. There's a lot of labor involved because you got to move wines from the tanks to the barrel, then out of the barrel, then you have to blend them. I'm gonna guess. We'll see how we'll see how oaky this is. I'm gonna guess it's probably they probably just use oak chips, put oak chips or oak staves into a big vat. And that's what imparts the oaky flavor. Yeah, a lot of people associate Malbec with Argentina. That's the country that kind of put the grape back on the map. But actually, it's a French grape uh, from Bordeaux. You also find these wines in Cahors. Oak Age 2017. Let's see if it's any good. It smells okay, but it smells like cheap wine. You know, surprisingly, this is not a big, huge oak bomb. I smell a little bit of the oak, but you still get some blackberry, black cherry type flavors. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of stemminess. It does smell like Malbec. It's okay. I have some friends that maybe, some friends that really don't care about wine, and anytime they taste something like, oh, it tastes like wine. These two reds are kind of an example of that. Just taste like a standard red wine. They don't taste awful, but they're not anything that's blowing me away. Again, fruity plush on the palate, but as I'm talking, the wine just completely disappears. So that's where you know that the wine isn't the most high quality. Between these two, what would I pick? I'd probably pick the Portuguese wine. I think it tastes a little bit higher quality, but at the end of the day, I don't think they're really that bad. Darn it, I'm upset! I brought out a big blue spit bucket just in case any of these wines suck so I could dump the whole bottle in them. Actually, the wine that I thought would be the worst out of the bunch ended up being the best. This is actually, the Chardonnay's actually pretty darn good. So I know not everybody has the budget, the means to buy more expensive wine, but yet they do like the flavor of wine. They like wine better than beer or, or hard spirits. I'm one of those people. I think tastings like this show you that there is value to be had out there if you're looking really, really hard. I don't think any of these three wines were offensive. Wherever you are in your wine journey, don't be afraid to experiment, to try new things. And don't be ashamed if you're not buying more expensive bottles. We all started somewhere. At the end of the day, wine is made to be drunk and enjoyed. Do you have any go-to? two cheap bottles, drop it in the comments below. And if you're thinking about what to watch next, why don't you check out my reactions video to Is Expensive Wine for Suckers? I'll put it right up there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more awesome videos like this, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.